Hello everyone and welcome back to BE Ilab. Today, we embark on a fascinating journey into a crucial aspect of deep learning for geospatial tasks, channel attention. But before we dive in, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Your support keeps us motivated to bring you more insightful content. Now, let's get started. Channel attention is a pivotal concept in deep learning that focuses on enhancing specific feature layers within the data. At its core, channel attention aims to selectively boost the importance of certain feature channels while suppressing others. In geospatial science, this module allows deep learning models to concentrate on significant features. For instance, imagine a water segmentation task from Sentinel-2 satellite data. In this task, green and NIR bands are more important than other bands. We can use the channel attention mechanism to transfer this knowledge to the model. Now, let's explore how channel attention works in a deep learning model architecture. Various methodologies for channel attention have recently been proposed. Initially, Hu et al. introduced the concept of channel attention, unveiling the Squeeze and Excitation Network or SENet. The fundamental component of SENet is the squeeze and excitation or SE block strategically employed to gather global information, capture channel-wise relationships, and enhance representation capabilities. The SE block itself comprises two distinct segments, the squeeze module and the excitation module. In the squeeze module, global spatial information is accumulated through the utilization of global average pooling. Simultaneously, the excitation module focuses on capturing channel-wise relationships, generating an attention vector via fully connected layers and nonlinear activations such as ReLU and Sigmoid. Subsequently, each channel of the input feature undergoes scaling by multiplying with the corresponding element in the attention vector. This intricate process underscores the adaptability of channel attention through dynamic feature scaling based on learned relationships. In the squeeze module, the simplicity of global average pooling in capturing complex global information and the increased model complexity introduced by fully connected layers have prompted subsequent efforts to enhance the output of the squeeze module. This has led to strategies aimed at improving the squeeze module itself, reducing overall model complexity by refining the excitation module or simultaneously enhancing both the squeeze and excitation modules. To enhance the SE block's capacity to capture high-order statistics, Gal et al. proposed a refinement to the squeeze module, introducing a global second-order pooling or GSOP block to model high-order statistics while collecting global information. Similar to the SE block, the GSOP block comprises a squeeze module and an excitation module. In the squeeze module, the GSOP block initially reduces the number of channels from C1 to C2, where C2 is lower than C1, using a one-by-one one convolution. Subsequently, it computes the covariance matrix of C2 by C2 for different channels to capture their correlation. Rowwise convolution is then applied to the covariance matrix, establishing explicit relationships between each channel pair, I and J. In the excitation module, the GSOP block employs rowwise convolution to preserve structural information and generate a vector. This vector undergoes further processing with a fully connected layer and a sigmoid function to produce an attention vector with the dimensionality of C1. Finally, the input features are multiplied by this attention vector, akin to the mechanism in an SE block. The incorporation of second-order pooling in GSOP blocks has enhanced their ability to gather global information compared to SE blocks. However, this improvement comes with an associated increase in computational demands. Recognizing this trade-off, Lee et al. introduced the Lightweight Style-Based Recalibration Module, or SRM. In contrast to the original SE block, the Lightweight SRM introduces a novel approach by integrating style transfer with an attention mechanism. The key innovation lies in its utilization of style pooling, a technique that incorporates both the mean and standard deviation of input features to enhance its ability to capture intricate global information. This method proves effective in refining the global representation while minimizing computational demands. When presented with an input feature map X, SRM initiates the process by collecting global information through style pooling, amalgamating global average pooling with global standard deviation pooling. 
Subsequently, a channel-wise fully connected layer, coupled with batch normalization and a sigmoid function, is employed to derive the attention vector. Similar to the SE block, this attention vector is then utilized to scale the input features. One notable improvement in the SRM block is the incorporation of a lightweight channel-wise fully connected layer, replacing the more computationally intensive original fully connected layer. This adjustment aims to enhance efficiency without compromising performance. The versatility of the SRM block is evident in its capacity to improve both the squeeze and excitation modules. Moreover, it can be seamlessly integrated after each residual unit, mirroring the adaptability of an SE block in model architecture. Addressing the challenges posed by the computational demand and parameter count of fully connected layers in the excitation module, integrating an SE block after each convolution layer becomes impractical. Additionally, the use of fully connected layers for modeling channel relationships is implicit, leading to potential limitations. To overcome these issues, Yang et al. introduced the Gated Channel Transformation, or GCT, a method designed to efficiently gather information while explicitly modeling channel-wise relationships. GCT adopts a unique approach for information gathering. Initially, it collects global information by computing the L2 norm of each channel. Subsequently, a learnable vector alpha is applied to scale the feature, introducing a level of adaptability. The mechanism further employs channel normalization to facilitate interactions between channels through a competition mechanism. In line with common normalization practices, GCT incorporates a learnable scale parameter gamma and bias beta to rescale the normalization. Notably, GCT sets itself apart by utilizing TAN activation to govern the attention vector, adding a nuanced control element. In its final steps, GCT not only multiplies the input by the attention vector but also includes an identity connection, contributing to the model's robustness and preserving essential information during transformations. This distinctive approach makes GCT a compelling alternative for efficient channel attention and deep learning architectures. In the pursuit of minimizing model complexity, Senate adopts a channel reduction strategy. However, this approach falls short in directly modeling the correspondence between weight vectors and inputs, thereby compromising result quality. To address this limitation, Wang et al. introduced the Efficient Channel Attention or ECA block, offering a novel perspective by using a 1D convolution to establish interactions between channels without resorting to dimensionality reduction. The ECA block shares a similar formulation with an SE block, encompassing a squeeze module for aggregating global spatial information and an efficient excitation module for modeling cross-channel interaction. What sets the ECA block apart is its focus on direct interaction, specifically considering the interplay between each channel and its key nearest neighbors. This nuanced approach aims to control model complexity by prioritizing direct interactions over indirect correspondence. Compared to Senate, ECANet boasts an improved excitation module, presenting an efficient and effective block that seamlessly integrates into various CNNs. This enhancement signifies ECANet as a compelling alternative for channel attention, offering improved performance without sacrificing efficiency in model architectures. Relying solely on global average pooling in the squeeze module imposes limitations on representational ability. To enhance the power of representation, Chin et al. revisited the capture of global information, viewing it from the perspective of compression. Their analysis extended to global average pooling in the frequency domain, revealing that it corresponds to a specific case of the discrete cosine transform or DCT. Leveraging this insight, they introduced a novel approach known as multispectral channel attention. In the case of multispectral channel attention, given an input feature map X, the process involves dividing X into multiple parts. Subsequently, a 2D DCT is applied to each part, with the advantage of potential pre-processing results to reduce computational demands. Following the processing of each part, the results are concatenated into a vector. The final steps involve employing fully connected layers, ReLU activation, and a sigmoid function, mirroring the structure of an SE block, to obtain the attention vector. 
This innovative approach by Chin et al. in multispectral channel attention expands the representational capabilities by considering the frequency domain characteristics, providing a more powerful mechanism for capturing global information in deep learning architectures. In addition to the channel attention mechanisms we've discussed, there are two other methods known as ENCNet and bilinear attention. As an interactive practice, take some time to explore and understand how these modules operate. Share your observations and insights in the comments below. We're excited to hear your findings and thoughts on these approaches. Now that we've talked about the intricacies of channel attention mechanisms, let's take the next step and explore the implementation process of SENET and ECA. Our journey begins with the implementation of SENET. But before we dive into the details, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Your support keeps us motivated to bring you more insightful content. Now, let's get started with the SENET implementation. In the SENET implementation, we begin by importing essential libraries from TensorFlow. Specifically, we import layers such as input, CUN2D, global average pooling 2D, dense, reshape, and multiply from Keras, a high-level neural network API integrated into TensorFlow. These layers will be instrumental in constructing our SE block. The core of the SE net architecture lies in the squeeze underscore excite underscore block function. This function defines the SE block, a key component for channel attention. It takes an input tensor and an optional parameter ratio, default set to 16. The function dynamically determines the number of channels in the input tensor and proceeds with the squeeze and excitation operations. The squeeze operation involves global average pooling, which condenses spatial dimensions to capture channel-wise information. In the excitation operation, two dense layers model channel-wise relationships, with the output reshaped to match the input tensor dimensions. The input tensor is then element-wise multiplied with the obtained excitation weights, emphasizing significant features. Moving on to the create underscore SE net underscore model function, it encapsulates the overall SE net model architecture. It accepts parameters for input underscore shape and number underscore classes, where input underscore shape defines the dimensions of the input images, height, width, and channels, and number underscore classes indicates the number of classes in the classification task. The model starts with an input tensor and applies convolutional layers, each followed by the previously defined SE block. Global average pooling is utilized to reduce spatial dimensions, and a final dense layer with softmax activation produces output probabilities for classification. The model is instantiated and returned. In the last section, we present an example usage of the SE net model. Here, we set an input underscore shape corresponding to the dimensions of your input images and specify the number of classes, number underscore classes, for your classification task. The SE net underscore model dot summary method provides a concise overview of the model architecture, displaying layer names, output shapes, and trainable parameters. This summary is crucial for understanding the model structure and ensuring it aligns with your specific requirements. Now, Let's shift our attention to the ECA block. Similar to the SENet block, the first step involves importing essential tools from TensorFlow. Moving on, the heart of the ECANet architecture lies within the ECA underscore block function. It takes an input tensor and an optional parameter, ratio, default set to 4. The function conducts channel-wise mean computation through global average pooling, compressing spatial dimensions to capture essential channel-wise information. Subsequently, 1D convolutional layers are employed to model channel dependencies, utilizing kernel sizes of 3 for both convolutional layers. The resulting output is reshaped to align with the input tensor dimensions. The input tensor is then scaled through element-wise multiplication with the obtained excitation weights, emphasizing significant features. The create underscore ECANet underscore model function is the overall architecture of the model, initiating with an input tensor and integrating convolutional layers, each followed by the ECA block. The model concludes with a dense layer featuring softmax activation, producing output probabilities for classification. In the next scenario, we define the input underscore shape corresponding to the dimensions of your input images, including height, 
width, and channels set to 12. Additionally, you need to specify the number of classes, number underscore classes, relevant to your classification task. Then we use the create underscore ECNN underscore model to create our model and show a summary of this model. Thank you for joining us on this insightful journey into channel attention mechanisms. Stay tuned for our next video where we are going to the spatial attention mechanisms with code implementations. You can find the code example on our GitHub page. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover in future videos, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more cutting-edge geospatial content, and we'll see you in the next video.